Hi everyone, this is going to be a video walkthrough on problem 2 on CS6 Spring 2021, exam prep worksheet number 5 on iterators and iterables. Okay, so for this problem, we're trying to implement an iterator of iterators, which will accept as an argument a list of iterator objects containing integers. The first call to next should return the first item from the first iterator in the list. The second call to next should return the first item from the second iterator. And then if we eventually go to the last iterator, then we kind of circle back from the beginning, okay? So I think an example is very illuminating of this process. Suppose that we have three iterators, A, B, and C, such that A has the elements one, three, four, five. B is empty and C has only one element too. How we should output these elements is we should, we should first output the one, then the two, then the three, four, and five, right? What we're really doing is like we have the iterators in order and we kind of just keep circling through them, right? We go to ABC, then we go back up to ABC and we just keep calling next, okay? So that's kind of like the intuition for this question. So let's try to see what the code we have provided is. So the code provided is that we have a blank line here, which probably indicates that we're implementing the iterator interface because we see that we have these two methods here. Okay, and then we have to implement has next, next, and the constructor. And we also need to figure out what instance attributes we should have. Okay, so for the actual coding of this, I'm going to move to my laptop just because it's a bit more fun. So give me a quick second. Cool. Okay. So you guys can see here that we have the same exact class described on the discussion. I just wrote it up quickly in code. Okay. So in order to approach this question, let's first dive into some intuition. Okay. Give me a second. So my idea here is that suppose we have a B and C defined exactly in the example as one, three, four, five, B is empty, and then C is two, okay? So if we recall from the last problem on the worksheet, a very good way of approaching these questions is that in the next method, we have three steps. So step one is extract the next element. Step two, prepare for next time. Sorry about that. Next is called. Step three is going to be return the next element. Okay, so these are the three steps. And how it's going to look here is I'm going to assume that we've already figured out which is the next iterator that we want to get the element from, okay? So somehow we're already going to know which iterator that we should call next on. And then all we need to do is say like int, I don't know, answer is equal to that iterator dot next, okay? So somehow we're gonna store the iterator that we know we wanna call on, okay? then the next thing we need to do is move to the next iterator, okay? So in this case, we wouldn't wanna to go to B, we would wanna go all the way to C, right? Right, so we wanna somehow move to the next iterator to call next, and then we'll return answer, okay? So this is the general logic of this question, and how I'm gonna approach it is I'm gonna put Actually, I'm gonna quickly get rid of this. Okay, I'm gonna start off in the constructor because I think that's a good place to start. And looking at all of the iterators in A, let's create a new linked list of these specific type. Okay, and we'll call it list. Okay, so then we'll first create this list. And what I want to do is take all of the iterators in A that have something in them. In this case, that's only going to be 
A and C, and we're going to put them in list. Okay. So for each iterator, we'll call it iterator in A, if iterator dot has next, let's add that to list. Okay. So what I'm really doing here is I'm ensuring that every single iterator in my list has something left, right? So this is a very good criteria because now we have this invariant that every iterator in list has something left, right? So we know that every single iterator in this list now or has next, right? Okay, so the next thing that we wanna do, I'm gonna quickly get rid of these drawings for a sec, is let's figure out the next method with this in mind, okay? So first in the next method, I like to start off by just saying, if we don't have anything left, let's throw a new no such element exception, okay? So the next thing that we wanna do is extract the next element. And we know that the next iterator from the next iterator. Okay, so we know the next iterator is going to be the first iterator in our list link list. So we'll say inter iterator integer, we'll say next iterator, is it gonna be equal to our list? dot remove first. And I like linked lists because they have these remove first methods. Okay, so we have this next iterator and what we need to do is extract the next element from it, right? Next. And I think this is very, very important here is that since we know that every single iterator in this list has something, right? We know that when we call next, we will actually get an answer and this would an error because we ensured that in this for loop, okay? So now going to step two, what we need to do is, this is the crux of the problem, and I think this is a very clever, is that if we have a bunch of iterators, let's say iter one, iter two, iter three, what we can do is always remove the person in the beginning, right? Then we can insert iter one at the end, right? And we can kind of keep repeating this cyclic action of removing the iterator from the front, adding it to the end. And we know if we keep repeating this cyclic behavior, then in the example before we had A, B, C as one, two, three, or as one, three, four, five, C as two. We see that we'll first have A output one, right? Then we will move A here. Then B doesn't have anything in it. Then we will have C output two then we'll move C, C here, right? And then C doesn't have anything in it. And then A would output three, four, five, right? So you guys can kind of see that with this logic, we indeed iterate through the iterators in a cyclic fashion, okay? So how that's going to look in our code is we will say if next iterator dot has next, then we will add it to the end. Okay, so that's how we prepare for the next time next is called. And then the last thing that we're going to do is return answer. Okay, so this is a basic implementation of the next method. All we need to do now is implement has next. Okay, so since we know that every single iterator in this list has something next, all we need to make sure is if this list is Right, if there's something left in the list, right? Another way of writing this, which I actually enjoy more, is you can use the is empty function. Okay, so just a quick recap of the solution is that the idea here is let's have some sort of list that contains all of the iterators that have something next, right? Then what we're going to do is every time next is called, we'll get the first iterator right from the front. We know that there's something left in this iterator. So when we call the next method, we know answer actually exists. Then what we'll ask ourselves is if there's anything left in this iterator, 
let's add you to the end so we can go back to you in the future, right? And then we'll return the answer. So this is all for the second problem. I hope you guys enjoyed the solution and I'll see you guys in the next one.